This episode of the Reppin' the State Line podcast with John, George, and Josh is sponsored by the Brodo Rockstar Group at EXB Realty. The home buying process is stressful, especially when it's your first time. The Brodo Rockstar Group is committed to giving you a stress-free experience while guiding you through the process from getting approved for a loan to getting the keys on closing day. Let their team treat you like a rock star. To book an appointment or to search all available properties in this state line area, visit buywithbroda.com. Welcome to this week's episode of the Repping the State Line podcast with John, George, and Josh. Bienvenido al episodio de esta semana del podcast de Brapping the State Line con John, George, y Josh. All right. What do you guys think? <laughs> All right. Hey, we're bilingual now for this place. We are yeah. bilingual thanks to Google Translate, but we're talking, we were talking before we started recording about a great event. But first, welcome, State Liners. We're back. 2023. 2023. Hope you had a great two week stretch there where you, um, Spent time with family, did the important things, had a great new year. Um, but we were talking about this event that George is holding this weekend, and it's a bilingual event. And I was like, I don't, I can come. I got my translator right here. So that's what that was. <laughs> Before we get yeah, into it, George, be... you want to talk about the event real quick? Sure. Uh, it's going to be an awesome event. It is actually not an event. It's more of a seminar. Uh, I'm sorry, a workshop. And it is a workshop for ITIN. Uh, anybody that is either looking to get an ITIN, um, Christian and his team will be applying, doing applications for ITINs. Attorney from- Christian Solaris, Midwest yep. Law Works. Like, Correct. We know Christian, but our listeners might not. Yes. He will be providing uh, complimentary mm-hmm. services to enroll and get an ITIN. And then me with Plan and Home Lending, I have the ability to do mortgages for ITIN borrowers. So those that have ITINs, or even if you're still going through the process of obtaining one, and Christian's going to help with that, we will set you on the path to home ownership for 2023. Okay, it's be so a fun event on Saturday morning, uh, 10 a.m. over at Midwest Law Works. Okay, right and you keep saying ITIN, ITIN, ITIN. That's I N T N. ITIN. Right. ITIN. All right. ITIN. What is ITIN? ITIN. Because again, is, people might not no, know no, what no, that it, is. Individual tax ID number. Okay. And why would I need an individual tax ID number? Because you don't have a social. Okay. So I'm a resident alien. I'm legally in the country. I work. I pay taxes, but I don't have a social security number because I'm not a citizen. Only citizens get social security numbers. Correct. Or I'm working here because I'm a far, I'm a, I live in a foreign country. I come here to work my job, but I want to buy a house because I'm working here for one of the big manufacturers. I might be given an ITIN number, correct? Yes. Okay. So just want to clarify. So if you're listening to this and you're, you fit in that qualification, you want to buy a house. This is the opportunity for you to learn, to learn how to go about doing that. So I think that's a great idea. You got it. So let's recap. I mean, we we had a nice week off for the we, for the new year. We and, did, and and we had an awesome Christmas to New Year. So we should have a ton of stuff to recap for our listeners now that well, we're back. Um, I sure had a lot, 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 lot that I got done over the last two weeks. I'm very excited about it, and I'm ready for the new year. And well, considering considering the uh, options of things to do in the Rockford area and surrounding areas this weekend. Um, lay low, relax, lay low. relax. One more <laughs> week of relax. Yeah. One more weekend of relaxation. Uh, I, although it is a, you know, before I don't want to jump too far in, into this weekend yet, because it is going to be, it is a holiday this Saturday for some people like myself and John. So before we do that, let's, uh, Tell me about what what you guys did for New Year's or what you guys did for um, the week between Christmas and New Year's. Typically, it's a re- for me in sales mortgage, really slow week. So typically, I take that week off 
and I was somewhat busy. We had that huge snowmageddon, um, supposed snowmageddon. We went to the closing on the 23rd. After that, we had Christmas, the usual, very nice, relaxed for the weekend. And But I was busy the week of, un uncharacteristic. I had several deals to work on, several customers to reach out to, make sure their, their applications were moving forward. Um, but New Year's was fun. Um, we For New Year's, I had all the family over our house. We cooked, and I don't know any of these details because I am not a chef, but I, I know is Monica bought one expensive, expensive slab of meat, and it was so good, and I would pay that kind of money any day of the week to have meat that tender, that juicy, that I don't know what cut it was or anything. I all I know is that they souveted it. Supposedly, I think that's the word, and it was phenomenal. We had that for New Year's hmm. Eve. We did a fun little thing. The kids. We had nine p.m. for the kids, midnight, and then the adults stayed up and played minute to win it with all the grandma, grandpas, adults, and it was fun. Sounds awesome. Yeah. That was for blast. Christmas or for New Year's? That was New Year's. New Year's. All right. I know your traditions for Christmas, but what did you do for New Year's? Well, my tradition for Christmas changed this year. Unfortunately, fortunately, Gills, the owners of Gills Diner retired. Uh, longtime employees did buy it, but they decided not to open on Christmas morning. So we went to Sunrise for Christmas morning over on Windsor and Alpine. Awesome. Amaz amazing food. I'm not going to complain. We all just went in our pajamas, had food, hung out again. Um, the next didn't do much that day. Um, shout out to our friend and fellow realtor, Clyde McClintock, uh, Windsor Pizza. He mentioned that. I wound up having Windsor Pizza Christmas night. Nice. Um, so it wasn't too bad. Hung out with the family. I mean, kids were running around, boyfriends, girlfriends, all that stuff. So it is what it is. Uh, Monday, though, after Christmas, I was showing houses. Everybody was off. Like that was the technical holiday out yeah. working like you said it was weird it's, we've had a lot of stuff going on um i think it's week... because it's so bad in they, not bad nothing's changed since october november right what has changed is people are kind of like oh this isn't a, this isn't panic this isn't going away anytime soon this is kind of the new norm that, right go ahead. sorry sorry to cut you off no you're fine it's, but just yeah the week just flew by and um you know, was working again, New Year's Eve. I probably looked at seven houses that day with one of my clients. And then um, we were the old couple. My son went out to a New Year's party. My daughter was at a New Year's party. My other son was at his friend's house for the night. And me and Venice at 10 o'clock just looked at each other. and was like, we, we drank, we went out, had some wine, went to a, wine, went to a winery. Um, we were together Friday, George before that and then uh, with our families we we got to go out to geneva winery great place if you're ever in geneva illinois um brent is amazing you got a bunch of bottles we had mm -hmm. some we had some good burgers from burger local yes. nice we burger place fun, there. really fun game yeah really fun really fun game but it's called hot takes hot takes it's it basically everything you're not supposed to do with family and the holidays Yes, is in this game, and everybody gets into it, and it gets heated, and it gets fun, especially after bottles of wine. <laughs> yeah, it's con it's conversations about all the things we're not supposed to talk about: religion, yeah. politics, uh, uh, just life in general. But yeah, we had that, and then um, New Year's Eve, me and Venice, I showed seven houses. I picked her up. We went up to Stoller in uh, up in Delavan, Wisconsin. They do an amazing cheese and sausage and little extra stuff board and fresh homemade break, baked bread. And we did that and we split a bottle of wine up there, brought another bottle home, finished that second bottle and said, all right, it's 10 o'clock. Happy New Year. I'll see you tomorrow. We went to bed. <laughs> so like old people, we were, we did not wait for the ball to drop. Nothing. Um, but just caught up with people on New Year's Day and just hit the ground running. So that's what we did. Very simple, quiet, nothing crazy. It's weird as the kids get older, things change. Sure. 
for sure. How about you, Josh? Uh, I had a weird, weird, uh, holidays, I guess. Um, I worked a lot before Christmas, super busy. Um, as you guys know, closed a, a bunch of insurance loans for you guys. Um, the week in and then Christmas, um, we go to my mom's in the morning on uh, Christmas Eve. Um, and we made like a brunch and had a whole bunch of, um, presents and and that good stuff then we always go to backyard for christmas eve night so we did that with my in-laws and then open a bunch of presents there um and then christmas day santa came and uh then um we go over to my in-laws house for christmas day uh and it was cool because my grandmother-in-law came over um she only, she's been super sick um so she was there for about 20 minutes and all of us got to see her and, and uh, she ended up passing um, Thursday, the 29th. Um, so there we had some family flying from out of town. Um, one of my, like, I guess my aunt, uncle in law, I would say um, from Arizona flew in to see her mom. Uh, so we were consumed with that a lot. Uh, it was also Mason's birthday on the 30th. So we got him tickets to the Bulls Bucks game in Chicago that Wednesday nice. night. Um, and the game was awesome. I mean, it's hard to go to United Center and, and have a bad seat, but we sat in like the 200 level section, kind of like the club level, and they were awesome. We had like a dude, like a butler guy that could come and take our order for anything we wanted and bring it to us in That's our nice. seat. Um, and then the Bulls ended up beating the Bucks in overtime. They tied it up with like three seconds left in the game. Um, so that was fun. And Friday night, Mason's birthday, we went to one of our favorite places, I Heart Sushi, um, and just demolished an incredible amount of sushi. I did get the salmon generation roll again, and it was nice. just as good the second time I had it than the time me and John had it. I need to go back and get that again. That was really good. No rice, the problem, just everything else. The problem is our nothing will ever be our first ever uh, I Heart Sushi experience. It, it was when they had the all you can eat, and me and John just said, surprise us. And they threw like six rolls on there of the most fancy sushi you could think of. And it looked like a charcuterie board for sushi. And hmm. and you can you could see that picture right now because I'm sending it to you, George, to splice into the video. Sweet. <laughs> and then New Year's, it's just uh, we we laid low. We didn't do much. Um, I've been slammed. Work is super busy. Um, Planet Home Lending is keeping me as busy as busy gets between all of their loan officers. Um, so just that and then uh we were talking about the awards gala yesterday at our uh, crew 815 meeting and then come to find out i was nominated for the community service award so that was pretty cool um but other than that i mean just work kids life we started baseball practice again so now we have sports tuesday wednesday nice. thursday saturday sunday nuts nice. uh before i forget I, I do want to give a shout out to six, is it 640 Meats? 640 yep. Meats, yes. Yes, 640 Meats. They provided the meat for our New Year's party, and it was, like I said, unreal. Just, I don't know if it's what Kyle did to it in terms of preparation and, and what he put in it, or the meat, or a combination of the both, but holy moly, it was good. So shout out to them because we did call around probably four different places and they were the only ones that could get it without having to order it and have it get to the store. They had it on hand, exactly what he wanted at a reasonable price and great service. I mean, they were really hey, I, very, very, very happy with it. I also want to give a shout out. We uh, today at the office for lunch, we ordered from Brian's Trade Right off of Kishwaukee and almost Sandy Hollow. They're uh, kind of south of town. 
Mm-hmm. And I know all of the meat places have lunch, right? You can go in and get a, a sandwich, chips, whatever. But Brian's Trade Right does it right. So every meal, they have it from 11 to 1 every day for lunch. It's 8 bucks, whatever they make. And then you can get a cup of soup for $4. So for $12 all in, okay, today we had the pot roast dinner. So we think of like a to-go container. The whole bottom portion was pot roast. One of the, the inserts was mashed potatoes. The other insert was corn. And they smothered gravy over all of it with Jeez. a slice of bread and butter for $8. Dang. That's crazy. That's impressive. And then, and then the cup sure. of soup for 4 bucks is like the jumbo cup. Wow. For 4 bucks. Not bad. That's that's almost every place that I go to now. Cause soup is like 5, 6, 7 bucks now. It's like almost a regular item where but it's like I would say it's double the size of beef fruits soups. Interesting. For 4 bucks. And they had chicken and dumpling today and chili. Awesome. And we all know that Coop loves his soup. Mm. Coop soups. Oh, speaking of which. All right. So I think I might have got the funniest gift out of all three of us for Christmas. Um, And you guys know I love to cook. I love food, all that, right? So my mother-in-law yep. over the summer at a farmer's market somewhere in the state of Wisconsin got me an apron. Okay. All right. And it says, this is the apron, okay? John, it says, once you put my meat in your mouth, you're going to want to swallow it. It is. (laughs) And there goes our PG-13 rating. Yeah. (laughs) All right, take it down. (laughs) That's, That's awesome. That's so, hilarious. Though. It must have been like the gag gifts because my wife got me a sleeve of golf balls. And when you look at the golf, and I don't have it in front of me, or else I would grab one and put it on the screen. But it says, I'm lost. Do you know John Broda? <laughs> I'm going to laugh when I go out to Atwood one day and I find a golf ball. It is the John Broda ball. Well, that's it. It's got, it, where you, I told her, I said, I, I feel bad using it. She's like, no, you got to use it. You got to see if somebody finds out who you are. I'm like, she's like, cause I know you're going to lose them. I'm like, okay. <laughs> so she knows me so that, well. That's awesome. So yes, I opened that up and it came with, um, it came with a couple of like uh, dry rubs and some uh, barbecue sauces and, nice. and all that good jazz. So it was one for the ages. I could not stop laughing. Very cool, very cool. Unreal. So, what do we got for now? We can get into the segment part of the segment where we talk about what's happening. What do we got going on this weekend? It is a it's a it's it's a barn burner. Let me you know make sure you got your notepads out. There's a lot going on. Um, <laughs> the state the, the state line is it the state line is in its winter coma right now. That's the problem. Yeah. <laughs> Obviously, we've got my event, so that is cool. But it's not really um, an event, though, George. It's a workshop. It's a workshop. It's a workshop. <laughs> Mason has a basketball tournament. Mason has a basketball tournament on Sunday. If any of you guys are bored, at the time at the time this is being aired, I will be in the Wisconsin Dells. Oh, cool! Are you guys going for the weekend? No, so no. I wish. Um, we all, you guys, all know my wife is a, the gymnastics director at Kid Spot in Roscoe. And they have a meet this weekend. Well, she's flat. She's driving up there tonight. Tonight we're recording, and she's um she's got Friday. She has to meet in the morning, another one early morning, and then she's free the rest of the day. And then she doesn't have anything to do again until Saturday afternoon, and then Sunday. So she has this big block of time. So I'm just driving up um, separately because they all go up together, all the coaches. Uh, but she's got like a two room suite that everybody's in. So I'm going to be able to crash with her. We're going to go up and just kind of hang out, you know, hit one of the wineries I like that's up in Baraboo, um, hang out in the hot tub. And then I'm coming back Saturday morning for George's workshop. 
Awesome. So, that's, but I get to I get to go away for a, a night. That's exciting. Hey, and then you're, but you're a bachelor from now until then. Yeah. So I got to cook for <laughs> myself, and well, what else? <laughs> so love you, got, honey. We've got a couple things this weekend. I'll go over the events. All right, there's really two, two that I think are worthy of attention. Uh, I'm gonna say three. Trinidad. Wait, I already said it wrong. Trinadora's first Saturday smorgasbord of music is on Saturday from five to seven at Stockholm Inn. To have live music there on Saturday. And on Sunday, well, yeah, I guess Sunday there's two things. You can go listen to the Rockford Chamber Orchestra rehearsal at Rockford Lutheran School. That is happening from 145 to 245. Or if you have a knack for doing hair, probably in makeup. There is going to be a bridal hair workshop and master class at Elevate Salon and Spa on Ooh. Sunday from 10 to 2. I got that nothing be, going on Sunday. That would be the two or the items of interest in the area. Make this, make this look pretty. This week. George, what are some of the other events that are going on? So the big one that I'm excited for this weekend is Ukrainian Christmas. That's right. Saturday every year. Orthodox Saturday. Christmas. I well, call Ukrainian Christmas. It's it's yes. an Orthodox Christmas. Well, because the Greek Orthodox, the Russian Orthodox, and the Ukrainians all celebrate this. So yes, yes. But the it food is, is very similar for the Russian Orthodox Ukrainian. It's like a very similar stuff that I grew up with, and I am super excited because yes. I was invited. Are there gift, gifts at the Ukrainian Christmas. There is. So this is the, so we have Christmas with my family, like my media family and my parents on Christmas Eve. Christmas day is at the in-laws and their whole side of the family. Well, my, my mom's side of the family, she's really the only one that was growing up Orthodox and really celebrated on January 7th every year. Her whole family's coming down from Wisconsin and the cousins and everybody, we're all getting together and exchanging gifts with that set of cousins of mine on the seventh and Saturday. So yeah, it's my third Christmas that I get to celebrate. But and that's why like everybody yells at me, almost everybody in my neighborhood, all the stuff's down. I'm like, nope. My Christmas is until the seventh. I will take it down after this weekend. But not my stuff then. my stuff stays up always until after the seventh. So it's twofold for me though, because on the sixth, that's the Christmas Eve, mm -hmm. that's also my parents' wedding anniversary. Oh. They got married on the 6th of January, and they are celebrating 52 years of marriage wow. this this um, Friday. So, yeah, but we're the same way. We never take anything down until after the 7th, and that's it, you know? Very cool. So yeah, all my, my stuff is gone. up. Your tree's gone? Tree's gone. I also get a real tree. I have a real um, tree. Yeah, but when did you put your real tree up? The weekend before Thanksgiving. Oh, okay. And it is still in gorgeous <laughs> shape. No needles falling off, watered regularly, treating it properly. Wow. Look at you. Yeah. Look at you putting We still have all of like our Christmas tree shame. kind of up, but the Christmas tree is gone. My no, my thirty nothing gets my, touched until my thirty five dollar white pine tree from Bernard's. Wow. <laughs> yes, my eighty dollar tree from Williams Tree Farm. So, drying so, out, drying out because the smoker. No, the yeah. last thing we do at um at the Carhartt Open is we burn the Christmas trees. Oh, so I gotta bring my tree? You leave it outside, you can bring it, and we burn the Christmas trees in the burn barrel. Oh, so I got to put all those pine needles inside my car. All right. Or you just tie it to the roof of your car. Yeah. I'll do that. I'll br I will bring it. It'll be worth coming. It'll be worth coming just to get rid of the tree. There you go. Price of the admission, one Christmas tree. I usually I usually take mine, bring it out back, put it out in the, the woods that used to be behind my house, let it dry out, 
and then come spring, I would cut it up and it'd be like in my first fire pit where you'd get that that pine smell and everything burning in the backyard. There you go. Nice. So sweet. So excited 2023 is here. Uh we've got three more episodes to go after this week. Three or four? Three. This is four? episode seven. Yeah, so we have three. Three? Okay. Three more. Yeah, we've got uh next week's a fun one. We have in store we have a uh, guest joining us for another talk, sit and talk, and then we've got a re, uh, another sit and sip. Another sit that, and sip. Yeah, and then our finale. So yeah, should be a fun way to end the season two here as we get into the end of January, and then we regroup and come back March ready with full swing spring market. Hopefully, full swing spring activity. Isn't that crazy? Is me? Summer. Isn't that crazy? Think that. When we start our next uh, season, season three, it's going to be spring. It is crazy yes. because it's cold. And Man, I am and... excited. That means yeah, golf is around the corner. Yeah, Ooh, but I'm still, baby. I, I still, my favorite time of the year just passed. So I'm kind of like somber this week because my favorite time of the year is always Thanksgiving through New Year's. And now that the, especially those Christmas break weeks that the kids are all home, my wife's home, we get to do stuff around here and, and just veg and relax and hang out as a family. I love it. It's my favorite by far, even more so than bear games. That That is probably my number one time of the year. Bears are number two. But anyways. Are the bears at home this week? They are. They are at home. You're not going? Too. No, I'm not going. It's that because I mean, it's Saturday. It's Christmas. The two games that I couldn't go to this year is Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. I can't go. Oh, they, play, yeah. they play Saturday this week. Yeah. Yep. 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 All right, guys. Anything else so, that we want to share? For well, yeah. Post? Let's 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 share with this real quick because this is that time of year. You know, everybody does their resolutions everybody does Uh-oh. their goals do you have a resolution or a goal for 2023 my goal for 2023 is to build and create cooperjosh.com and really start branding myself more than i already do um and have a nice, happy, healthy year. Fair enough. Fair enough. George? Ja- oh, me? Yeah. I asked the question. I get to go last. Um, I would, uh, my goal is to be employed at the end of the, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, my goal is, my goal is to keep um, the momentum that I had going into the end of the year. Uh, it was 2022 was absolutely crazy. I, I sat down and put a post together to a couple of my groups of friends and just how what happened in 2022 between job change, between the market tank, between the war in Ukraine, family that coming to visit me, taking a trip there, all the vacations, all the trips that I did take. And ending the year on a positive note with several closings and closing out the year strong. So I just want to build on that momentum and hope it carries forward. And we have a decent spring market into the summer. So professionally, I want that to take continue to take off. Um, also, professionally with it with our little podcast, I'm excited for season three. Season two, in my eyes, was a build season one was a long season where we built the characters up so everybody knows who we are now that's at least that's been watching us for the last year who we are our families etc season two we've thrown some wrinkles at you with interviews and more um on the more of the what do they call them the sit and sips um sponsors etc season three we'll see what kind of wrinkles we come up with for next season so i'm excited that we're continuing to grow this grow this podcast this channel and where it takes off so those are my goals that's awesome so for me a goal 
that I have is it's a professional goal, obviously, besides like the podcast growing that stuff. I would like to add 10 new team members. When I say team members to my business, that's either I want to add three people to the Broder Rockstar group, my real estate team, but I want to add 10 agents total. I want to help, you know, five to six other, five to seven other agents get their fullest potential in 2023, make the most money, earn a retirement, get health care because we don't get that with a lot of places, but we have all that in my company. So that's that's my big goal. I want to grow that this year. I, You know, George and Josh, I've spoken to a bunch of companies in the last few months. When you're up, everybody's like talking to you. They want to know. And looking at what other places have to offer, it's all awesome. But nothing beats the overall package here. And that's what I wanted to grow. And as far as I said, that's my goal for 2023. And I'm make, putting that out in the world so people can hold me accountable. But my um, my resolution for 2023, and I'm going to have you guys help me with that as well, is um, I turned 50 in July. I want to drop 50 pounds. So you guys, when you see me get the cheeseburger instead of the salad, say something, will you? Mm-hmm. Um, but that's that's a big goal for me. I want to drop 50 by 50. Um you know, working through intermittent fasting, exercising more. Josh gave me some great tips the other day at lunch on how to stay active, even though we're behind the desk most of the day. Um, and I am walking the um, 5K for the Shamrock 5K at the um, Speedway on March 18th. You can find it on events on Facebook. It's 25 <laughs> bucks if you sign up before the end of this year. I challenge you guys to join me. It might be a great episode. Um <laughs> But sure. um, but I'm gonna do my first 5K. Don't know if I'm gonna run the entire thing, but I think I can walk 3.2 miles. You know what I mean? I I could definitely do that. So that's the growth I'm gonna work on. So sure, proud of the man. That's great. That's the resolution, and that and I hate resolutions. I really do. I tell people I resolve to not have not to resolve anything, but you gotta have goals. So that's my big goals for the year: big business goal, a big personal goal, and we'll see that's how awesome. it goes. Sweet. So hopefully y'all have great resolutions as well and you stick to them, but yeah, I'm excited. It's going to be a fun year. And if you're watching or listening right now in the comments, you know, if you're on YouTube watching this or you're seeing it posted on Facebook, put it in the comments. What, what is your goal? What is your resolution for this year? What did you, what do you want? That's awesome in 2023. And while you're doing that, please do all the podcasty YouTube things like share subscribe wherever you listen wherever you consume um i gotta throw that out there as a as a plug and um if you are thinking that you have some great content you would like to share with us reach out let us know we'd be more than happy to promote that on repping the state line you facebook channel and on the podcast so i think that's all i got for you guys this week that's all i got Yep, sounds like a plan. All right. All right, gents. Well, hey guys. this week we'll sign off and State Line will see you next week. All right. Have a good one. Hey, guys.